What's up, everyone? I'm Coach D. Hey, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my page. We're under 800 subscribers away from getting to 20,000 subscribers. So thank you guys in advance. So the debate between J.D. Vance and Tim Waltz was interesting. Um, I thought at first, you know, they seem like two adults. They seem like they were both being adults. And, you know, you you add in Kamala Harris, who's an adult. I would say that there are three adults running and one big baby. J.D. Vance came off as someone who was almost a centrist. And, and I say that in terms of this. I don't have a soft spot for J.D. Vance. I don't think he's a genuine person, but I do think he came off that way in the debate last night. And I think that was by design. I think he wanted to come off that way. But I think there was also a part of him that was trying to save his political career. I think he sees the writing on the wall. I think he knows that Donald Trump is not going to win this election. And he's only 40 years old. So as a 40 year old, he's thinking, I still have a lot of years to be a politician and knowing the way politicians are, how much they want to be politicians, of course, he is going to try and rescue his political career. So he is out there, for the most part, distancing himself from Donald Trump. Now, today, he kind of had a new tune. He was kind of, you know, he's at a, he's at a rally and he's insulting Tim Waltz a little bit. He's kind of dropped the whole routine of being like the nice guy. And I think that is because Donald Trump was mad watching that debate last night. I think Donald Trump noticed, or at least Donald Trump's advisors noticed, that J.D. Vance wasn't really towing the line enough. So they probably talked to him and said, hey, during that rally today, you better go out and give, give us some Trumpisms. Because you know, in order to be someone that close to Donald Trump, one, you have to praise him. Two, you have to basically mimic him. And that's what J.D. Vance is doing now. He's trying to put on his best Donald Trump face to make his leader happy. But something about the debate yesterday. J.D. Vance came out during the debate and basically made this case for misinformation or, or censoring misinformation being, you know, the, the, the threat to democracy. Of all the things he could have said are threats to democracy, he decided to say that censoring misinformation was a threat to democracy. He said that Kamala Harris wants to censor people who engage in misinformation as if that's a bad thing. Most of us watching that were thinking, why would you want to fight for the ability to engage in misinformation? Why do you want to fight for the ability to be able to lie? So I thought there's no way they're going to stick to that line. I thought maybe he, he, he misspoke. Maybe that's something they brought up during their debate preparation, but, it, but he didn't say it the right way. But then he goes to this rally today. And I can't believe what he did, what he said at this rally. So if you remember during the debate, Tim Waltz said, you can't yell fire in a loaded, in a, in a, in a crowded theater. And during that time, J.D. Vance said something about, you know, debating people when they are, are trying to spread misinformation instead of censoring them, debate them, persuade them. And again, I thought, no way are they going to stick with that point because it's a horrible point. It is horrible to think that you should be able to spread misinformation or lie without any consequences. But at the rally today, he doubled down on it. Check this out. Governor Waltz mentioned this yesterday. He talked about you can't shout fire in a crowded theater. And you know what that from that line is from a disgraced Supreme Court opinion. We believe that the solution to bad ideas is to debate them and persuade our fellow Americans. Kamala Harris believes the solution to things she disagrees with is to silence you and to shut you up. It's disgraceful, it's anti-American, and we will not stand for it in Donald Trump's political movement. So what exactly is the angle here? J.D. Vance, is arguing in favor of allowing people to yell fire in a crowded theater. I'm having a hard time understanding 
what the angle is here, where they feel like it benefits them to argue that. He says, instead of censoring people, you should be able to persuade them. Listen, if someone runs into a theater and yells fire, people start running out. They're trampling each other. They're trying to get out. They're trying to get to safety. There is no one to persuade at that point. What is the angle here? Why are Donald Trump and J.D. Vance arguing in favor of being able to spread misinformation, disinformation, lies, and being able to run into a crowded theater and yell fire? To say that is the opinion of a failed Supreme Court, that is the opinion of all of us. We all think that if there's not a fire, you should not be yelling fire. The only reason you would yell fire inside of a theater is if there were actually a fire and you were trying to get people to escape that fire. I know they're, they, they, I know a lot of times I feel like they're calculated. There's a lot of times I feel like they, they, they know what they're doing. On this one, I don't. I feel like they're missing the mark big time. If you look at even his crowd when he's saying these things, they're sitting there thinking, wait, we're supposed to think it's good that someone runs into a crowded theater when there is not a fire and yells fire. And believe me, I get I get part of this. They know that the people that they're talking to are going to say, yeah, whatever you guys say, because that's what it's like when you're in a cult. I just don't understand why J.D. Vance, who seems like he's like he's definitely smarter than Donald Trump, would be arguing in favor of this. It makes no sense. It's a bad take. This is a losing take. This is going to be part of the reason they lose this election. And here's another thing I want to say before I go. J.D. Vance, when Donald Trump loses this election, Donald Trump will be out there saying that the election is rigged. Here's where my proof is that J.D. Vance is trying to rescue his political career. He will not be seen agreeing with Donald Trump. He will not be seen saying that the election was stolen. As soon as they lose, he's done. He's done with Donald Trump. From that day forward, he will be trying to prove that he was never a Trump guy. He will be back to saying he's a never Trump guy. He'll be saying, you know, they had me say these things, but I didn't agree with it or whatever. He will be doing whatever he can to distance himself from the stench of Donald Trump, just like many other Republicans will be doing as well. And it is our job not to allow them to do that. It is our job to hold their feet to the fire and remind them that they enabled hate bigotry, racism, misogyny, misogyny and, and homophobia, period.